Bona lakal, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about Israel and Syria. Now, the Syrian strategy of waiting out the reluctance of any nation to address Israel's repeated violations of Syrian airspace seems to be over. After Syrian air defenses shot down an F-16 from Israel as well as a purported Israeli drone near the Golan Heights border. Israel immediately responded by lobbing missiles at 12 military targets in Syria, including locations south of the capital city of Damascus and in the mountains to the northeast of Damascus, declaring that Iran was responsible for the so-called violation of Israeli sovereignty, despite the fact it was Israel violating Syrian airspace at the time and Russian-provided anti-aircraft missile systems, which were used to defend against what is now the more than 100th time in the last seven years that Israel has violated Syria, Syria's airspace and sent air operations into Syria, with the reason being that they blame Iran. Israel states that the F-16 was deployed in response to an Iranian drone launched into Israeli airspace. However, this gets into some murky territory, giving the area Israel considers its airspace, which is in conflict with the areas Syria considers its airspace, including but not limited to the Golan Heights border region, which Israel has taken from Syria and occupied for more than 18 years. There's also the problem that Israel's Iron Dome and, uh, what's it called, David Sling air defense systems broadly overreach the borders of Israel and anything that crosses into them, Israel tends to describe as an interference into Israeli airspace, even if the aircraft merely took off in Damascus, which falls within the radius of the David's Sling air system. For those who aren't aware, the Iron Dome and David's Sling are increasingly larger uh, anti-air missile systems and intercept systems designed to protect Israel, specifically Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, from any missile attack which might come in their direction. The Iron Dome is about 30, has about 30 kilometers range optimally and has some of the best success of any air intercept system in the world. And David's sling is somewhat larger with a radius of 300 kilometers, making it stretch well past the borders of uh, Lebanon and into the border, you know, well past the borders of Jordan. And this is where things get pretty murky because suddenly we have a system that if it detects any activity, Israel is very willing to describe any activity on a bordering nation as an interference with their uh, airspace, even if it's not their airspace, which these uh, vehicles, whether they be well, mostly aircraft vehicles or missiles, uh, are, if these, you know, are, uh, sorry, there's a garbage truck in the background that I wasn't expecting and it's, it's interfering, it's inter interrupting me. David Sling's radius and Israel's propensity to call anything that enters the David Sling radius an interference with their uh, airspace and sovereignty poses a, a, a lot of questions as to what exactly happened. It can be very confusing, and at this point, we don't have enough evidence that an, you know, an Iranian or Syrian drone had even entered Israel, actual Israeli airspace as compared to approaching the Golan Heights region or even leaving in a southern, southerly direction from Damascus. And we also have no evidence that it was Iranian at all uh, or of any Iranian influence given the number of influences active in Syria at this time. Now, Syria is a bit of a nightmare with large swaths of the southern borders uh, pretty much entirely controlled by rebels who, for those who aren't aware, many of the Al-Qaeda uh, oriented rebels are funded and armed by Israel themselves. 
and this is something Israel certainly doesn't want to be heard. Whereas uh, Syrian, the north, you know, Damascus, north of Damascus, a small strip of land stretching from Damascus south to the Golan, well, close to the Golan border region. Uh, this is all controlled by uh, Bashar al-Assad and the Syri you know, and the Syri Syrian armies. And with Israel controlling the Golan Heights, uh, Al Qaeda and other rebel groups controlling the south of Syria, and Assad with the support of Russia and, uh, in some cases, yes, Iran, uh, controlling the northern area, uh, as well as Hezbollah and other. Uh, Shia-aligned terrorists controlling both a large chunk of the eastern area as well as segments on the western uh, borders of Syria. What we have here is a complete clusterfuck that Israel is completely willing to take advantage of and has more than 100 times in order to defend what they consider their interests. And their interests include a, a number of things, including, but not limited to, Al-Qaeda at this point. Because they have been funding the Al-Qaeda forces out there, and these are the only ground forces which seem to be making any ground against al-Assad. And now it's important to remember also that al-Assad is very much a secularist. He's not interested in playing part, you know, playing part in the Sunni Shia war, whereas Iran certainly has their interests focused on expanding Shia control into Syria, and Israel along seems to have interests in taking advantage of terrorists who are just this modern day version of pirates at this point, privateers, in order to see, you know, that they are able to clean up after al-Qaeda and take more land that they deem as God granted to them in a mark of sheer Zionism on their part, which it absolutely is. Now, um, Iran has denied deploying an unmanned aerial vehicle to the area, but Israel insists that the drone was launched from Ir an Iranian airbase near Damascus, which was one of the 12 locations targeted by Israel's response. Uh, to, wi to which I have to say, can we please see some evidence? Because so far, no one's actually talking about the actual the UAV, the drone that was launched from a Syrian airbase, and none. Uh, you know, American Air Force has no evidence of a UAV he in heading in a southerly direction from an Iranian airbase in Syria. Uh, Russians have not released any information. Uh, confirming that there was a UAV that crossed into Israeli airspace. We are looking at a situation where it's absolutely he said, she said. And this only escalates the problem further. Because Israel has gotten away with a lot, quite a fucking lot, through manipulating these he said, she said situations and taking advantage of its militaristic might, especially its land-to-air and other air defense systems. However, the end of this story is actually quite interesting to me because while Israel took to a remarkable, non-proportional response against Syria for, again, more than the hundredth time in the length of the Syrian civil war, it only took one call from President Vladimir Putin of Russia to bring the uh, hostilities to an end for the time being. And at this point, half of Aryan Syrian air defenses have been destroyed in the process, which means Syria is severely crippled and is going to be needing support from its major allies, uh, Russia and Iran, in order to even stand up against the terrorist elements which exist on the ground at this point. And I can tell you right now, the reason that uh, pre uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Yahoo backed off is that the one thing Israel can't do, while they're able to reach uh, Armenia and the far side of uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Egypt with their air defense systems, 
they are basically powerless against Russia, and I suspect that Russia serves as a very powerful deterrent to Israel's aggressions. If Israel goes to war with Syria, actual war, we're not going to be seeing the end anytime soon because it's not just a war with Syria at that point, it's also a war with Russia. Now this does not mean that I think we're, we're approaching World War III at the moment, but I do think that matters are getting more and more tense, especially given some of the more hilarious aspects of this situation, given that along the Golan Heights border, there were signs put up with meme faces on them that said, where's your plane now? And uh, let me find uh, a better translation of that because I can't remember the exact translation off the top of my head. Uh, it was, here it is. Your planes have fallen. That's what it says. Uh, actually, let me pull this up for you really quick so you can see it. Uh, save image. Because I really do think you guys will appreciate the sheer hilarity of this image. Because while I don't think World War III is starting, I have the impression that we are seeing the beginning of World War Meme. This, of course, was found on a border, and they are calling out both in Arabic and, Isra uh, and uh, Hebrew the Isra uh, Israelites for their attack on Syria and mocking them very openly. I, for one, welcome our Mimi overlords. <laughs> However, we're not going to see more than lobbed insults at this point, and while the last attack before this one was less than a week ago, uh, Israel will likely continue responding to anything it deems as a violation of Israeli sovereignty with severe and disproportionate responses because it's Israel. That's just what they fucking do. Does this mean I'm on the side of Iran? God, no. If it weren't for the oil, I don't think I would understand why Russia even has an allied position with them. It makes absolutely no sense to me, and I think both of these countries need to, you know, get a little glassing in order to realize just what they're exactly messing with. However, that too isn't something we're going to see. This isn't the beginning of World War III, however, it is a high escalation on the part of Israel, and due to the responses, this is going to be grounds on which we see further escalations come out in expectation that Israel is going to take anything that Syria does to defend itself as a violation of their sovereignty, and Israel does not believe in proportional responses as is mostly popular with world, you know, national world leaders today. And again, it's not like I see, I don't see either of these countries as better or someone worth supporting for the simple reason that other than Assad's regime, which I'm very supportive of being one of the most, you know, the strongest uh, secular regime in the region right now, and the only ground I see that secularism has in the Middle East. Whereas Iran on one side wants to fill the Middle East with Shia Islam, and Israel on the other side wants to conquer an enormous swath, about half of the Middle East, to recreate Greater Israel, the land they consider their promised land. It's all a bunch of ideological, religiously fueled, but politically driven uh, bullshit, in the simplest way put. However, I do not also think that we're going to be hearing the end of this anytime soon on Israel's part or Syria's part, because Syria has responded. 
They've recognized that Israel is just going to keep attacking them for any reason they deem necessary, whether it's right or not. And while this isn't the beginning of the war, it's certainly a shot heard around the world. Thank you, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.